Hello everyone, welcome to my Core 4 OCR June 2010 paper. We're going to have a look at question 9. It's a long integration question and as you can see from the first mark, there's going to be a lot of integration to do. The first amount of marks for question I are 9 marks, so it's a lot of work to do. The second part we can see from reading the question that it's about a volume of revolution question. And that's for four marks. So, moving on to part I. Let's think how we're going to integrate x plus cos 2x all squared. Now, we cannot integrate that straight away. So, what we need to do is simplify this thing so that we can integrate, hopefully, one bit of it at a time. The way we're going to simplify is expanding out our double brackets. So if we times this out, we're going to get x squared plus 2x cos 2x plus cos 2x all squared. But the way we write that is cos squared 2x. Now let's think about what we can actually integrate here. We can integrate the x squared, so that's not a worry. Can we integrate with 2x cos 2x? That's going to be a lot more tricky. We're going to need by parts to do that. And can we integrate cos squared 2x? Not quite. We need to actually change that using trig identities first. So we've got a strategy. And because we've split it up like this, we can integrate one bit at a time. We know how we're going to do each one. And then we can put our answer all together. Okay. So, let's first of all talk about integrating the third one. We need to split this up so that it's not cos squared anymore. Now, if you look in your formula booklet, you have the formula that says cos of a plus b equals cos of a times cos of b minus sine of a times sine of b. What we're going to do is we're going to think about your double angle formula, which you might know off by heart, and that involves using A and B as theta. So you have A plus B, both theta, two theta. So when you do cos theta times cos theta, what you actually get is cos squared theta. When you do sine theta times sine theta, similarly, you get sine squared theta. So this simplifies to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, which you might already know off by heart. The important thing is what we're going to do with it next, because our aim is to get an expression for this thing. So we're getting close. We've got one of them here, but we do not want anything to do with sine squared. So what we're going to do is change our sine squared theta to 1 minus cos squared theta, and because it's minus here, we expand in and we get minus 1 plus cos squared theta. So if we simplify this equation now, on the right-hand side, we've got 2 cos squared thetas. If we add the 1 to both sides, we've got cos of 2 theta, add 1, equals 2 cos squared theta. We want an expression for cos squared theta, so what we're going to do is divide by 2, half it. A half cos 2 theta plus a half. Now that looks a lot nicer to integrate. A half plus a half cos squared theta. Half 2 theta, sorry. So, what we need to think about now is we called this 2x theta. So what we're actually timesing by 2 is the 2x. So that means that instead of 2 theta, we're going to have our angle as 4x now, which is very important. That is ready to integrate. This is ready to integrate. The only thing that isn't, we have to do the middle term by parts. So let's have a go at that now. OK, 
Okay, so we're doing the integral of 2x cos 2x. We know it's by parts because it's one function, the 2x, times by the other function, the cos 2x. We're going to call 2x our u and cos 2x our dv by dx. That is because we know that when we differentiate a polynomial, it'll simplify. And this one in particular is going to just go to a constant 2. dv by dx is cos 2x. And when we integrate cos, we go back to sine. Because we're reversing the chain rule, we have to divide by 2 a half sine 2x. Now, by parts, the way I remember this is I remember that it's uh, two functions, and by that I mean u and v. So your two functions times together. Now, one of them has times by 2, one of them has times by a half. So when you put them together, you're going to get Then you have to take away the two new functions that you found. So by that, I mean we started with u and dv by dx, and we got du by dx and v. So you take away the integral of those two times together, which gives you sine 2x. And we think, great, because we can work out the integral of sine 2x. When we integrate sine, we get minus cos. Because there's a minus here, it's going to go to plus. And because we're reversing the chain rule, we're going to divide by 2. We'll worry about our plus c in a minute when we go to put it all together for our answer. If we call the question we started with star, then we can use this notation again to save us writing the whole thing out again. Our integration is equal to, for the first part, when we integrate x squared, increase the power, divide by the new power. Our second part we've just done by parts. I'll put that in green. x sine 2x plus a half cos 2x. And the third part we've not quite done yet. We still need to integrate what we wrote here a half plus a half cos 4x dx. And then we'll put our plus c on once we've done this. So for our final answer, we're going to get x cubed over 3 plus x sine 2x plus a half cos 2x. The integral of a half is x over 2, and the integral of a half cos 4x, well, sine goes to cos when you differentiate, and we need to reverse the chain rule, 1 over 8, sine 4x, add c. So that is our answer for part 1. Moving on to part 2. I've just copied the answer because I know that we are going to need it in a minute. If we read the question, the diagram shows part of the curve y equals x plus cos 2x. And it goes, as you can see, between 0 and pi over 2. The shaded region is bounded by the curve and the x-axis and the line that x equals a half pi. It is rotated completely around the x-axis, so it's spun around this way, around this axis, to form a solid of revolution of volume V. So if you imagine you've got an area, you spin it around into a 3D shape. Hopefully you've learned that to get the volume, you have to integrate between our, your limits, whatever they may be, pi, 
times your function squared with respect to x. Now, in our case, our limits are between 0 and pi over 2. And we can put pi outside of our integration because it's just a constant like any other number. And then we need y squared. And that is what we're going to integrate. Now, if you think of y squared, y squared is x plus cos 2x all squared. That looks familiar, doesn't it? That's because we have just integrated that and it took us almost 10 minutes, so we better use our working out. And that was our answer for the integral of y squared. The difference is here that because we're rotating the volume, the area around to get a volume, what we need to do is we need to times it all by pi. And we don't need a plus c because we're going between the limits of pi over 2 and 0. So let's evaluate this answer. We will keep pi outside the whole thing and step by step figure out the each evaluated limit. So, evaluating pi over 2. Pi over 2 cubed is going to be pi cubed over 8. We've already got to divide by 3, so it's pi cubed over 8 times 3, 24. x sine of 2x is going to be pi over 2 times by sine of pi. Now, if you think of the sine graph, sine of pi is just 0. So that's not going to have an answer. That's just going to be naught. And then we've got the half cos 2x. Well, 2x where x is pi over 2 is going to be pi. Cos of pi is a little more interesting. It's going to have an answer of minus 1. So we have a half times minus 1 minus a half. And our next limit, x over 2, is going to be pi over 4. And our next part is an eighth sine of 4x. Well, sine of 4 times pi over 2 is 2 pi, which is also 0. So that goes. And now we take away the evaluated form of our limit where x is 0. So the first term is 0. The next term is 0. The next term is a half cos of 0. Cos of 0 is 1. So that gives us an answer of a half. And the rest of it is 0. And sine of 0 is 0 as well. So that's all quite boring there. Now if we just simplify this answer, we get pi, pi cubed over 24 minus a half minus another half is minus 1, and we might as well just put it in that order nice and neatly. So once we've done the first part, the second part was simply evaluating what we had done and knowing to keep your pi outside, and we can leave our answer like that. It's in exact form, which is what the question wanted. I hope this video has been useful. I hope you've followed what's going on, and it covers a lot of different